All right, we're back. We are on page 25 of the math analysis notes. We're in note three. We're talking about the unit circle. We're trying to get very, very familiar with it. We haven't even filled one in yet, right? All we've come up with are the definitions of the circular definitions, I should say, the unit circular definitions of the trig functions, right? So, and these are things you got to remember, and it takes a little while, but eventually it's just second nature, and you can't believe you ever struggled with it. So, the sooner you memorize everything, the easier it will be. So, this question says, using your definitions, at any point x, y on the unit circle, nope, any point x, y on the unit circle can also be written as a function of theta or functions of theta, um, the angle of rotation between the x-axis and the point x, y. So all ordered pairs on the unit circle can really be rewritten as cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. So alphabetical order, x, y, X comes before Y, cosine comes before sine, C comes before S, perfect. So what I wanna show you now is, um, there's actually a thing you can do, so I'm putting my iPad to the side here, uh, on your calculator. So take out your calculator, and uh, we don't need any of this. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put it on graph, and I'm gonna press menu, and then I'm gonna go to graph entry edit, and I'm gonna go down to option four for parametric. So we don't know what this is yet, but you're gonna get a sense of it pretty quickly, maybe. Uh, parametric, all right, so x1 of t, y1 of t. So we just said that like on the unit circle, we can think of x as a cosine of theta and y as sine of theta. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna try that. I'm gonna try uh, x is cosine of, I have to use t as my variable, you can tell what variable to use when you're graphing because it tells you, right? Function of t, so cosine of t. And then here, sine of t. Uh, there's gonna be a, a, like a small issue, but that's okay. I'm gonna press enter and just see what happens. So pretty, pretty interesting, it made a circle. Like you may or may not have been expecting that. I definitely was not expecting that the first time I saw it. Uh, fun fact, I confused zooming in and out. Like literally I confused zooming in and out. Seems like I can't really explain it. Like, I feel like I should, I don't know. I don't really know what I mean when I say that I confuse them, but I do. Like, I will frequently try to zoom in when I should really be zooming out, things like that. A uh, couple things about zooming a circle. So let me zoom out once. Okay, so you can see the problem here. We're not hitting the x-axis, but first let me show you a different problem that we could have. I'm a big fan of using zoom box. So if I use zoom box on this, look at what's gonna happen. My circle doesn't look like a circle anymore. And that's kind of an issue. So what you can do to fix that is in the zoom menu, the easiest way to fix it, well, I mean, probably zoom standard is the easiest way to fix it and just like have it, you know, do it. If you use zoom square, so the easiest way to explain what zoom square does is it makes a circle look like a circle. So it makes it so that the X and Y axes are using the same increment. So there you go, it like makes it nice and, and the right shape. Um, so zoom square will turn a circle into a circle. I mean, that's like weird, uh, but it's, it's because now each of your like grid lines, the lattice points always intersect at like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Like it's always on your nice, your nice uh, squares basically. You form squares with your lattice points. The, line, the lattice points form squares. I'm having a lot of trouble saying that. I don't really know. Okay, now why is our circle not closed? Why is it open? Well, let's go back and look. So I'm in radian mode for starters. And then T, so it's cosine of T. So T is our angle. We can do cosine of T, sine of T. We're going from zero to 6.28. That's the problem. 6.28, what's the issue with that? Well. Pi is 3.14 and then some. If I double that, I get 6.28 and then some. It's the and then some that's missing, which is causing my circle not to close. So if I go up here and I just make this 6.29, circles close. So that's what you wanna do. Um, once it's set up, I'm actually gonna do something kind of weird. I'm gonna change from radians to degrees. I hate doing this, but watch what happens. So zero to 6.28, I'm gonna change, in the graph, it's got its own settings. So it's menu, option nine, 
you're going to mess that up at some point. The way you're going to mess it up is you're going to go into test mode and you're going to choose degrees. Always choose radians when you go into test mode. You can change it after the fact, but if you choose degrees, it changes everything to degrees and you basically never want to graph in degrees, despite what I'm about to do. So I'm going to change this right now and press OK. What happened to my circle? Look at this. It's gone. Like all I'm seeing is this. So the reason that that's all I'm seeing is I'm now graphing between zero and 6.29 degrees. How many degrees are there in a circle? 360. So I'm getting like 1 60th of the circle. So to get the full circle, I need to do zero to 360 and press enter. Now, why did I do that? I did that because it's easier to see things when they're in degrees. So I'm now going to trace menu five, enter. So uh, when theta is zero degrees, I get one zero, which is telling me the cosine of zero degrees is one and the sine of zero degrees is zero because it's X, Y, cosine, sine. I'm going to type in 30 for 30 degrees. It's telling me 0.866, which like maybe I'm not super familiar with, but then comma 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is one half. So this is telling me that the sine of 30 degrees or pi over six is one half. The cosine we know is radical three over two, which means that radical three over two is 0.866. So I'm gonna type in 45. What do I expect to get? Well, I expect to get root two over two, root two over two. So the question is, do I know what root two is? Like 1.4-ish. Right, so I expect to get like 0.7-ish, comma 0.7-ish, because it should be cosine sine, they're the same. Um, and look at that, 0.707, got it. Uh, if I type in 60, so 60, I know that the cosine of 60 is one half, the sine is radical three over two. So if I do this, I get that the x-coordinate is 0.5, which is one half, that's cosine of 60 or pi over three. Um, and then 0.866 is radical three over two, that's the sine. So it's just kind of neat that we can do this. You can type in whatever you want, 210, right? 210 is 30 degrees away from 180. It's a 30 degree angle or a pi over six angle. You'll find that the cosines of all the pi over six angles are basically radical three over two, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, always radical three over two. Um, and that's what we get. The signs of all of the pi over sixes. So the pi over sixes are the thirties, so it'd be like 150. Look at the y coordinates. Uh, we get 0 0.5, 210, negative 0 0.5, 330, negative 0 0.5, and then 30 um, gives us 0 0.5. So the signs of the pi over sixes are always basically one half, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. The absolute value of the signs, I guess we could say, is definitely one half. So this is, I just wanted you to look at this. Um, you can change it back into uh, radians. Like what is happening? So now, What's happening is we're running into some weird artifacting from the calculator, basically. The step size that it's using is enormous. And also, that's 1.8 radians, right? One radian is almost 60 degrees. 1.8 radians is huge, um, which is why if you look at it, it looks like, like 1.8 radians. Look, it almost looks like, I don't know, like 100 degrees apart because it basically is 100 degrees apart. Like this has made a very interesting, like string art design kind of. You get a lot of neat things when you do weird things on your calculator. Uh, I'm gonna change this back to 6.29. And then the step size is still enormous. It's going by 1.8. Uh, I'm gonna go by point, just make it like 0 0.05 and it'll, there's some default smallest size um, that it will like not let you go beyond. Let me see, 0 0.005. That'll definitely, so 0 0.031. So it looks like it's pi divided by something, right? It looks like we moved the decimal place on pi a couple times. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go back to the notes. I mean, we didn't really do much in the notes. I really just wanted to play with the calculator, show you you can do this. So how did I get this again? Let me do a uh, new problem, doc41, graph page, press menu, graph entry edit. So that's three, and then go to parametric four, and then you can play around with it. So uh, that's a big deal. Later in the year, when we get to notes, I think 15, I'm gonna ask you if you've ever seen this kind of thing before. I'm referencing this. This is the thing that I mean. You have seen it before when we get to notes 15 because we just did it. So let me switch back over, see if I can even get to the iPad actually. Been a while, I might be asleep.
Um, it's definitely on the wrong page. So this is not where we were. We're right here. All right, so I'm gonna stop this here. I'm gonna come back in the next video and do a lot more stuff in the notes. So be back, see you there. Um, hope you're finding these helpful.